Good evening, this is Edward Nan with SonsOfGod.com, and it's the 9th of December. <clears throat> we had a conference call earlier this week, but we did have some technical difficulties, so I apologize that we, we absolutely had nothing uh, taped out of it. So we're going to uh, go back over some of that ground here in this word this evening. One of the words that God spoke to us many, many years ago is that the sons of God are going to have to be the greatest mystics that there ever was. And it's interesting because that has a connotation to it. You can hear that and think, oh, I don't want to be a mystic, I just want to walk with God, I want to be a good Christian, or whatever. And so you relegate being a mystic to some new age or other uh, situation or scenario. When in truth, the greatest mystic of all was the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he walked with the Father, he would heard the Father, he saw the Father, he lived in the realm of spirit and the spirit world. And so the sons that God is raising up are being raised up. And I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. They're being raised up to live in a different world, to track in a different world, to see, to relate, to have their basis point, if you will, in the spirit world, not in the realm of the natural plane of the senses. We know that our warfare is not with men and flesh and souls and whatnot. It's with principalities and powers, thrones and dominions. The entities that exist in the realm of spirit that have raised themselves up to come against the sons of God during this time. If we're anything less than a mystic, and I, w I want to use that word because I want it to, to shake us for a moment. If you walk with God, you're a mystic because every part of you is coming alive to a world that cannot be seen or discerned or heard. And all you have out there are, are, are illusion people talking about ghosts and all kinds of stuff, and they don't have any idea what they're talking about. But God is bringing you, he is bringing the sons into a realm of life before passing over the veil. The promise has never been that, well, you'll get resurrection life after you go through a physical death, and then God will raise you up with the cloud of witnesses. Well, He's going to do that for many, yes, but not for the sons of God who are the um, the progenitors of this new age, who are those who are ushering in this new age, who are those who have the mantle placed upon them to bring these things to pass. You will only be able to achieve that as you continue to walk more and more deeply into the realm and world of spirit until the world of spirit literally becomes more real to you than the natural plane. And we've talked about this, that we're in this transition. We're living a dual life. We're living a life in the realm of spirit and we're living a life in the realm of the natural. And each affects the other. And we're like a switchboard as we, we, as our body begins to uh, reflect the impulses of what's coming in the spirit. And, and you're having to be so careful not to evaluate based on what you see, feel, hear. Because a lot of it is all based in the realm of illusion. But God is raising the sons up to live in the realm of spirit, to live in the world of spirit. 
and it seems like it's been slow to come. But that's only been because the process has had to be thorough. For God has had to remove the weights and those things which have easily beset us and hindered us, distracted us, and to free the sons that they might truly ascend. Now, I'm not saying anything new that we haven't said for the last 10 years. The only difference is, is you know, it can seem like we're going around the same mountain. You know, you, you talk about the same thing. Or we've talked about the same thing year in, year out, or so it can appear. Uh, and then, of course, you know, other truths are, are brought in as well. But what we don't realize, every time we go around the mountain, or so it seems, we're ascending higher and higher into the Father's kingdom. Our eyes are opening, our ears are opening, and we're beginning to see what we didn't see the last sojourn around the mountain. And all of a sudden, things open up, and you see what you didn't see before. And in seeing, it thrusts you into a deeper abiding in his presence, a deeper abiding in the realm of spirit. So God is raising up the sons as these great mystics who are letting go of the tether as quickly as they can to that which has held them to the natural plane. And God has spoken the promise, I will allow you to have access, and you will come, and you will go. It's a promise in First John. I think maybe it's in 3, First John 3, but God is opening a door of access for the sons to come and go, to have access in and out of the realm of spirit and the Father's house. Now, a lot of this is happening, but the challenge the sons have faced is one of being able to recognize what is happening. A key in, in, in activating things coming together is just being able to recognize when you're in a meeting with the Lord, because a lot of times we don't. We don't connect the dots. We don't realize the deep things that God is, is doing and bringing forth. I mean, one of the greatest mysteries of all time is referred to in the book of Ephesians, where it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And honestly, people do not know what that means, nor can they know what it means unless they've walked in it and experienced it. Only when you begin to experience do you really begin to understand and begin to see. And so what are we talking about? These are the days of the parousia, the time of the appearing of the Lord. And that appearing is not to those unbelievers on the outside, but the appearing is happening to his sons within them. And we're only now beginning to experience a deeper awareness, a deeper level of, of recognition of the indwelling of the Godhead that is happening within each of us. People can read about it and say, oh, Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's a bunch of words. Good words, but a bunch of words until you reach in, or God reaches into you, and it begins to happen. And you begin to see it. And all of a sudden, it, 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 it is such a humbling experience because you sense his presence, that he's always with you. And not, not where it says, lo, I will be with you even under the, under the ends of the ages, but no, something different. Uh, I mean, yes, he'll be with, with us till the end of the ages. It's all good. But we're talking about an indwelling of God, the Father, 
and the Lord Jesus within us until as you walk through your day, you can't help but be progressively more and more aware of his presence within you. And it, it can just it can just floor you because all of a sudden you have taken something by faith and it begins to transition into a knowing state of being, a knowing reality that God truly is in you. And we're not just voicing it by faith, but we're experiencing the power of it we're experiencing the access that God is giving us, the access that God is opening the door for us to have with him. And that's, that's really, it's critical, it's key to this time of the parousia, the presence of God, to this time of the becoming of the sons of God. Because when we say, well, we don't know quite who we are, you know, and the Lord says, you're further down the road than you realize. You become so much more than you realize. What is he saying? I think he's saying, I become within you and you don't yet know it. I become so much more within you, the indwelling, the interpenetration of my spirit and your spirit is so much further down the road than you've yet realized. And so in many ways in your thinking, you're still living as paupers because you believe, but you haven't seen it. You haven't been able to kind of put it together. But the truth is Christ is taking up his abode in the sons of God first. And that's already happening. It's already here. When you go, whatever you do, whether you're, it doesn't matter what you're doing throughout the day. His presence is deeply resonating within you. And when you open your mouth, even if it's just to you know, say some inconsequential thing. Christ is speaking. Because you can't separate it out and say, okay, let me flip the switch. I'll, I'll go into soul mode now and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> you can't really do that. God is taking up his abode. And that is happening right now. And... A lot of it, I mean, many years ago I saw in vision as I was walking in a field of grain and I saw a tall golden building before me. It was a, an old type of style of building. It wasn't a modern skyscraper or nothing, but it was tall. And I looked at it and it glistened in the sunlight and shone like this deep golden hue. And, and the Lord said, this is who you are, this is what you are, referring to myself, but really to his sons. And that building represented all the wisdom and the knowledge that God had already imparted to his sons. And it's like the word says, you have no need of anyone to teach you. The Spirit will, you know, bring to light what, the, what God has done, <clears throat> what God has spoken. You are walking around, you literally are a Fort Knox. You are the vault of the knowledge of God the knowledge of his kingdom, and the knowledge of everything since time began, I tell you this, it's within you. It's within you. It's within me. It's coming to that point of resonating 
with the truth that you begin to see it. And all of a sudden, something comes into light within you. That's why the Lord said, the kingdom of God is within you. Yes, it's out there, but it's within you. What a mystery. It's hidden. Lord, you've, you've hidden in plain sight such great, great things that we, we don't even recognize. But it's within us. The kingdom is within us. I don't know if you've known how to relate to that scripture before. But Lord, let this, let this just kind of knock us on the head. Because the fullness of the deity exists within you and I. The depth of the knowledge and the wisdom, it already dwells within us. I was looking back at a scripture in Luke 8 and the Lord basically said the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom has been given to you but to others I speak in parables that in seeing they don't see in hearing they don't hear <clears throat> but to you I have given the secrets of the kingdom. Wow. The secrets of the kingdom. The knowledge of the kingdom. It's all resident within you and I. You're not, you're not reaching for God to give you something. You're, we're reaching to get unwrapped, released. You know, the, the, the Lazarus, take the, take the, Take the the the, the 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 clothes off. Take the, you know, whatever. Take it off. We have what we don't know that we have. We have what we have thought or or fought to attain to, and yet the Lord has already committed it into our hands and committed it into us. And the groaning and the travail that we've talked about for years is a groaning and travail to come out of the darkness. Yes, God has delivered us from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved Son, yes. But Lord, there's something deeper happening, deep unto deep. You're delivering us out of the darkness that we've still had within our mind where we haven't seen the depth of what you have done yet. We're still coming to that point of remembering, remembering. And the Spirit works with us to remember those things that the Lord has spoken and the Father has spoken to us, especially in the times that we walked with them before coming to this side. Proverbs 20, 25 has been something that we've lived with for so long. And it, it, it's, it, it goes, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to seek it out. This has been a walk of discovery a walk of illumination, a walk of finding that which has been hidden within us. That's why meditation is so important to to breathe and and, 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 and quiet and focus and just draw in. That's why it's so important when we have meetings or we, we come before the Lord that we clean ourselves out 
we we empty the the bonds and the garbage of the day that you know that has encumbered us and symbolically that's what the disciples did in the days when they walked with the lord and they would they would wash their feet and they weren't washing their feet because their feet were filthy which they i'm sure they were but it was symbolic because were washing their feet. They were just laying aside the filth and, and, and hindrance and, and, and mentality of the age, letting it all go so that God would, could appear to them. The secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom are here and you are the bearer of this. The sons of God unfortunately are still in transition out of darkness into light, out of not seeing into full vision out of not hearing into hearing. To us, it has not only been deemed uh, to be given the secrets of the kingdom, but to us, God has imparted and deeply embedded the secrets of the kingdom. And yet, at times, we walk around in a semi-pauper state, knowing who we are, yet not quite knowing. And not really realizing that wherever the sole of our foot doth trod, God has already given it to us. And so... We're in this time of unveiling. We're in this time of unwrapping where the suns are emerging into the earth, into the spirit realm. And that emergence of the presence of the sons of God is bringing with it a huge uh, leverage in the realm of spirit that is upending everything. It's even like, you know, when they came before the disciples and said, you know, you that, how does it go? Um, the world well, how does it do with turning the world upside down? You are the ones turning the world upside down. Have you come nigh unto us? They recognized something that was happening. Right now, we're really hidden. The world doesn't recognize what we are. We barely do. But the world is being turned upside down on its ear. And it has to do with what was said in the book of Hebrews. He says, Yet will I come once again, and I shall speak a word that will shake the heavens, and it will shake the earth, and it will deliver unto me a kingdom that cannot be shaken. There's a lot being said in that. But the sons of God are beginning to shake the world. It's interesting, I was talking to my daughter the other evening, and I said, a number of times I've had the opportunity to view from a little bit of a distance the satanic meetings that go on as he discusses with the... Um, the uh, um, principalities that serve him what their agenda is for that time frame and as I watched I realized that they didn't really know what they were doing they they had an, more and more difficulty communicating and they really didn't have any idea what God was doing and then on occasion two or three occasions I've had one sent to me in the spirit, asking, 
what is what is it that God is doing? And I realize Satan has no idea, and he's grasping at threads to try and understand the scope of what the Father is doing, which is hidden from the eyes of those passing. But this is the time that the emergence of the sons of God is beginning to shake everything. And only in a small measure are we beginning to see telltale signs of what it is that God has on the agenda, or shall we say the immediate agenda, of what's to unfold. In uh, 1 Corinthians 2, it goes, Among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it's not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age, who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory and none of the rulers of this age understood, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it's written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love them, love him. And it says, Now we've received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is born from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. It's, this is all very interesting where we are right now because we're at a time that God wants us to press deeper into the secrets of the kingdom, into recognizing <clears throat> what we've become and how far we are. And I know the Lord has said, you know, you're so much further. And then recently he said, okay, what, what I've spoken about is coming quickly and be prepared. And he's talking about what's going to unfold here in the earth. But there's an admonishing from the Spirit that says, wake up just a little more because you are the bearer of the secrets of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom truly does dwell within the sons. And Jeremiah 29 when you seek me and find me, when you search for me with all of your heart. Lord, we, we continue to, to push. I know that in our flesh and soul dwells no good thing. I know that we're hindered and hampered and, and by the, the soul flesh that is still on its way out. But Lord, we know that this was always going to be a product of your grace with shouts of grace, grace, the capstone is being put on the temple. And we are your human temple, Father. And so we've stumbled, fallen, made many mistakes. But Lord, it was never about our ability. It was about your grace. The birthing of the sons of God a product of your grace, not our attainment, not our wisdom. And Lord, we know that within us, you have given us everything. You have given us the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. 
And what are the keys? Well, that's what we're pursuing. The keys that open the doors. For what are the sons of God during this time? The door openers of the kingdom. And to you who listen to this broadcast, I salute for you're one of the door, key, door openers of the kingdom and you're beginning to open the door and pass through. But the key always starts within as God turns the light on and you see yourself in a light that you had never seen yourself and you realize, oh my goodness, surely the ground I walk on is holy. Not because of myself, not because of promises or provisions that God has spoken over any of us, but by virtue of the indwelling of the Father and Son that is permanently in you and unfolding on a much greater scale. And to that end, you're like, oh Lord, that I may not sin against thee. For I know that you're, you're present within me. Your frequency, your vibration overlaps me. I am one with you. You are one with me, Lord. And yet I am still coming to realize, realize what you've done. But I know now, Lord, that the ground we walk is holy ground because your presence deems it so. We thank you, Lord, that we've made it this far. May we make it to the end. May we complete the course and finish what you have sent us to do. Lord, we've stumbled along the way, and but we're not stopping. We're not backing down. We're not being at ease in Zion. We're not just saying, okay, well, I attained something, so I'm going to be happy with that and build myself a little kingdom or temple. Lord, we've come this far. We're not going to stop. You've opened our eyes more than we've ever seen, more than anyone sees at this time. We're beginning to see the spirit world. We're beginning to see your presence within us. We're beginning to experience a daily life of walking in the spirit with God that is not something of a by-faith or oh, yes, certainly, I know it logically. No, we know it by experience. Because the weight of it is heavy upon us. The weight of your presence is heavy upon us, Lord, because you are within us. And we're just now beginning to recognize what has been here for some time. Lord, you're pulling back the veil you're pulling back the curtain. And we're only now discovering what we are and the impact of what we are and what it will have upon this age. We don't take it lightly, Lord. And consequently, we guard every thought because we do not want to displease you but we want to walk in a manner, manner worthy of Thee, O God. And we give our hearts afresh to You tonight, Lord, and we, we cry out, Lord, what You've begun, complete it. Lord, we can't complete it. I wish we had more willpower or more whatever, but maybe... It's been set this way that we couldn't do it even if we had the wherewithal or unction to, 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 to try. 
because it all has to be by your grace. And anyone in the future that might come and say, oh, what a great thing you've done. No, it's not what we have done. What a great thing he has done. What a great thing, Lord, you have done. We say, Abba, Father. Lord, we look for the completion of sonship, and I know that the confirmation of our sonship is the redemption of our body. Lord, you've called us as sons, and you've spoken to us as sons, and you've dealt with us as sons. And we're here, Lord, waiting before you. And with shouts of grace, grace, Lord, I know that you're, you're completing what you began. Lord, finish the work. Bring us fully into this realm of abiding in your presence. Or maybe I should say it differently. You've already brought us into it. Lord, help us to recognize it, that we might synergistically combine forces and get the job finished. Lord, I know that you hear us. And I know that we have received what we've asked of thee because we know. You brought us to that point, Lord, where even if it's a small measure, there's a small measure of us that has come alive. And we know. We know you're indwelling. Even if it's in a small measure, something has changed. Something has made the playing field different. And I believe, Lord, that you will grant us according to what we've spoken because it's not us speaking anyway. Lord, it's you speaking. We thank you, Lord, tonight. We thank you, Lord. You've concealed it well. But, Lord, we're seeking and searching it out and discovering what marvelous things you've done in our midst. Amen.